So guys, right, amateurs shooting lower scores. Interesting video here for you. How many greens do you hit in regulation? What's your handicap and how many greens are you hitting? And we're gonna get into that. In this video, we're gonna be exploring a couple of different areas, a couple of surprise areas, essentially breaking them down and proving them so that you can lower your scores. All right now let's have a quick look here guys and if you are new to the channel consider subscribing plenty of videos coming your way guys let's have a look here at handicap zero 57 percent of greens and regulation now this is an international statistics you know often played at courses that perhaps aren't the most difficult out there compared to tour events with thick rough you know the back markers the tough championship conditions handicap one to five 48 percent of the greens so every second hole they've got to get it up and down okay so that's interesting all right, when we're looking as the handicaps get higher, six to 10, 37%, 28%, and obviously it's a short game, often the senior players here, players perhaps not hitting the ball all that well, the short game plays an important part of improving, but ball striking is king. The best players in the world are hitting it the best, we know that for a fact, we know that from statistics. So we're gonna have a look at better iron play, pure contact, consistent contact, clean contact, looking at the shaft lean, looking at the, the fundamentals, the characteristics, the hallmarks of great iron players. And then we're going to take a peek and explore certain areas, other areas, a couple of surprises in this video, guys. Can't wait to share it with you. Let's get stuck into it. Let's get stuck into some factual evidence-based instruction and get you on the path to playing some better golf. So solid contact, just getting solid contact consistently over 18 holes are just you know just hitting it clean it's just such an important part of the game let's have a look at how we can get better contact get better ball and ground contact here first off you know when you're looking at the masses of the people out there getting yourself set up with a little bit more weight on your left foot left leg you know getting the shaft in one line shaft and left arm in one line this is really getting us closer to the position where we need to be now we need to have you know some lateral shift and we need the body opening for a lot of people out there if we get ourselves set up in a great place at the start just by leaning this shaft over now we have you know around 12 degrees of shaft lean at impact in your address position someone like a McElroy you can get around 10 at the start by really getting the hands further forwards on the inside of this lead thigh. Now what we need from there is a little bit of a push forwards, a little bit of lateral shift and some opening. So we can get this right knee to cover the ball. You know, getting the, the left side to, you know, clear and extend a little bit and getting ourselves to move forwards. So assuring that we're getting ourselves set up 60%, we're feeling a little bit more pressure on that left foot, you know, getting ourselves set up with the hands a little bit forwards. You can keep yourself centered from here. You're gonna come back down into impact, get that right knee to cover the golf ball. You're gonna get yourself much more solid contact, ball, ground. Basic, clear, simple, but really, really effective. 40 degrees on the left, 55 on the right. Remember I said that. It's absolutely unbelievable when we look at the world's best ball strikers and how close they are to one another when we're looking at the engine room of the swing. And a lot of amateurs just have no idea about this, right? They're looking at YouTube and the next super elbow magic move or whatever. But the truth is, when you work with evidence-based instruction, right, this is what really helps because you get closer you get, the better you hit, right? You're working with facts. Now, I've got a feel through the golf ball here that helps people free wheel effectively and it helps the body tilt and turn and get closer to getting inside these averages of movement. Unfortunately, amateurs, they're not finding the point of failure in their swings. They go around in circles, but they're not addressing really the elephant in the room. And they're getting in positions like this. And from here, you've got no chance of reaching your potential. So let's have a look now. This is why we put together worldclassgolf.com. It's got 1,400 videos and you're working with facts, right? Evidence-based instruction. Let's have a look at a few here and now that help us move much more effectively through the ball getting our tilts and turns closer to the two averages the important message to get across here is the amount of tilt and turn it needs to be appropriate we need the shortening of the right side this separation as we're moving our hips forwards moving our head in this fashion like McElroy is one of the greatest ways to help us turn and tilt 
through the golf ball, free wheeling through the golf ball. Let's have a look now how we can feel this move and practice this move because this is transferable directly to the golf course. You can use this immediately. Guys, if you're looking for online swing analyst training, please reach out to me because we're helping just so many people play better golf. Right? Let's have a look at this amazing drill and feel. So people, right, the McElroy move. Now, the important message here to understand with this right eye lowering through the ball is it helps to get the correct combination of turn and tilt to allow us to get the correct delivery of the club into the golf ball. But it's a basic thought and feel used when we see it in slow motion by so many great players, McElroy doing the best. Now, what we're looking at when we talk about too much tilt, not enough turn, we get over this way, we're way behind the ball with iron shots, we're hitting it fat, you know, we're probably coming too far from the inside, a lot of advanced players have this problem. The other one is too much turn and not enough tilt, and we get ourselves really in an awkward place. We can't deliver the club, it's coming in too steep, your angle of attack, you're probably from the outside. But getting a combination of the turn and the tilt is where this right eye does a fantastic job. Let's go through it. Now, when we get to the top of the swing and we just simply lower the right eye. So what it does, what it promotes is the lowering of the right shoulder down to the right hip. But because the head's turning, it really promotes that the upper body is turning and out of the way. Now, don't forget Dr. Neil from worldclassgolf.com, my partner on worldclassgolf.com, worldclassgolf.com has measured Rory McIlroy with biomechanics and his chest, his torso, his upper torso is 55 degrees open at impact. I mean that's a lot but he's got tilt and turn and this is one of the great reasons, one of the great areas here of this move is the lowering of this side. Now what you can do or what you can feel when you get to the top, what you probably feel when you do it is you'll feel that the club almost lays back a little bit on itself and you'll feel some pressure on your index finger on this base knuckle. Now it's so hard to hit it left from here. How good is it? How good is it in golf to plow through a shot and not hit a left? to take left out of play. And this move really is, when I say it's a magic move, it's a great thing for your golf swing people, and it's not disruptive, it's a swing thought. You get out in the course and you can do it. When we're thinking about all these things in our backswing, it's often in the way. So get to the top, tilt your head, and just, you know, just stay there for a second. It's a, it's a different look, it's a different perspective at the ball. It feels a little weird at the start, but when you get through the ball, it promotes all sorts of extensions and rotations and your tilts and your turns into one package. So guys, how good are you mentally? I'm about to show you how to tap into your optimal state of mind more often. This is going to help you play better golf. Right? This is going to fight off certain moods on the golf course. I mean, it's great to hit the ball better, sure, but we have to be able to tap into our moods Golf is such a mental game. So let's have a look. This is some of the stuff. This is also what we're showing people on worldclassgolf.com. Guys, leave your comments underneath. I really want to hear what you have to say. So guys, right, the things that you can control. Now, this is the area. The mind has tremendous momentum. And if it's used, you know, in both directions, but if it's used effectively, we can tap into these resources. You know, we can get ourselves in the right area. And who knows, if even every now and again find the zone. The body language, use and move your body confidently. The mind and the body, they're on the same page. We often see how people, how they think, uh, just by looking at how they're walking and moving. So you fake it before you make it, use a bit of flair, twist the club in your fingers, walk like Greg Norm or Fred Couples. This way, move and use your body confidently and it can transform and change your mood fighting off certain moods, self-talk. Talk to yourself in a friendly voice. We're seeing people throwing clubs out there. We're seeing people calling themselves idiots, all those type of things. But talk to yourself in a friendly voice. It's a difficult game. We're allowed to make mistakes, and that's a good place to be. Distracting yourself between shots. Now, this is a huge one, isn't it? Like, we've heard Annika Sorensen that was writing you know, two of her favorite songs in the back of the scorecard, walking down the hole between shots, humming a song until it was stuck in her head. And if you were walking along and you got your eyes up and you're thinking about your body language, you're humming a song, you're not going into the future, you're not going into the past, and you're distracting yourselves because we can only concentrate for so long. And I think, 
you know, Jack Nicholas kept mentioning, you know, over the years, stay in the present, but how, Jack? You know, we're not all Jack, and that's, he's just such a brilliant individual, and, you know, but some of us need some help to be able to distract ourselves. Now, humming a song is a great one. We've heard it about from many other great sporting champions, Michael Clark, the cricketer from Australia. Your routine you can control, your breathing and etc. And it's great to have little lists like this. And one of the things that we look at in uh, worldclassgolf.com is, you know, having a little bit of a list with you with five or six points. It's not like you're walking around all day thinking how to think. But just to pull it out sometimes and have those checkpoint points, and we're all different. If you are the type of person that thinks a little bit about too much about what other people think, and if you need a few of these reminders, it can really help you get on the right path to fighting off certain moods and finding those optimal moods where we find that zone where we do play the best golf we've ever played. The mind, such an important area, guys. Get stuck into it because it's really gonna help you out.